Uh, Mark and Jaya, thank you for dropping into the Business Advisory Show for a moment. Uh, I was privileged to hear the first few minutes of your, your uh, interesting uh, panel discussion a moment ago. Um, what are the really difficult issues to talk about for small business in, and cyber security today? Um, the, the really difficult issues, I mean, I think there's, um, you know, it's a, cyber security is kind of an ongoing challenge. For all of us, like I think, I think um, anyone who anyone who thinks they have a foolproof solution to the space is kind of trick is uh, is fooling themselves. So the, the challenge with it is just that it's something you're going to constantly need to pay attention to, constantly like trying to upskill yourself and learning about it, making sure that you're doing the basics right, um, um, and not get too lost in the kind of the 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 attention grabbing headline stuff. Like it's it's with the stuff. It's really just um, like a, a, a Insistent focus on the basics that's, that um, is the real, the real secret. Yeah, which which to many small business owners would seem quite boring, right? Yeah. Is focus on the basics, but in fact, if they don't, yeah. they're just going to be so vulnerable now yeah, yeah. from here on in. Yeah, yeah, Jane. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the truth of the matter is that you have uh, the ability to counter the majority of attacks through the simple things. It's just. It does differ based on you know what kind of data you have and who you're working for and what you're working with and who's actually after that. So there are some really advanced attacks that even when you take a lot of precautions, you're still going to be a victim. And I think that it's getting more and more difficult in the plethora of the headlines and the media and everything else to kind of understand what you need to do and weed through to figure out what needs to be getting done because a lot of that is just discipline, rigor and hygiene. Um, and then to cover all of the rest of that stuff to really understand how you protect yourself, that requires a bit of knowledge and it's not that e accessible for small businesses. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> are there challenges in saying the right thing for you guys in terms of, you know, just sugarcoating to the market, just how, how scary um, and disruptive the future it might be, I think, to the naive small business owners out there? I think there's um, there's some things you can say that are foolish. Like I think pretending that you um, you know that there's there's no risk is um, the is the is the thing. And, and companies have done that before, where they they claim they're unbreakable or they're perfectly secure. And I mean that's just it's just a, a trap to fall into. And, and I suppose you know quite often um, we want to say we want to give complete answers to show that we have all this covered. And with this topic, it's just it's just. It's just not true, right? Like, it's, you, you put a lot of resource and a lot of focus on it, um, but you, you can never say that you have it, like, sold. Um, just, it's just the way it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jay. Well, I think there's certainly a degree of things that we don't talk about in the security community for one of two reasons. One, um, you don't want to have a, a sort of spreading of the fear, uncertainty, doubt. You know, you don't want to do that without having actual solutions that people can use. And, and two, um, there's a lot of split subjects um, in information security where people are, you know, ridiculously on the one side or the other. I'll give you an example. One of it is the encryption debate. So here in Australia, um, you've got, an, I think, a quite controversial uh, piece of international legislation that says that Australian companies, when demanded, must be able to hand over their uh, encryption keys and, and provide the unencrypted data. I think that's ridiculous. Um, it's basically a backdoor, and I know that the Australian Signals Directorate says, no, it's a you know legally mandated front door, but that is like legal speak. It's not real. Uh, technically speaking, it's the same thing. And I find it also uh, like wishful thinking if you have to have such a construct where that's even possible to hand over that data, that means there's a weakness in that technology that's not only going to be exploited by the good guys, but potentially by the bad ones as well. And, and because these are one of these uncomfortable truths, we do not discuss it. And we should. Because if we really want to demand privacy and security, and we want our governments to help us do that, then these kinds of issues do need to be discussed and understood by everybody. So what would be a simple way that uh, we might be able to help to spread that message um, because we've got thousands and thousands of accounts of bookkeepers that we connect with worldwide um, uh, and now through the show as, as well. What are some of the simple messages that small business should hear more often? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think it's those basic things, right? Like, you know, um, 
think about your password and you know use two-factor if you can if you can't use this wrong password use that password for just one service uh, make sure that you're being careful with your email because phishing's a, a real threat like the fake emails and you know do things like keep your machine up to date and use some antivirus software those those are the kind of core messages as well and I think also like um, you know Platforms like Xero and the Microsofts and stuff of the world, they can just afford to put lots more resources and hire um, the best people around to focus on this problem. So they they are better in terms of security. Putting putting your data in there, net net, is going to mean that you're safer. Yeah, yeah. I think ultimately users need to demand security and privacy from the brands they trust. Um, and regardless of whether it's accounting software, obviously there's a higher threat there, but regardless of whether it's that or a health app, you know, whatever it is that they're using online, they need to make sure that those hardware and software mechanisms are inherently secure by default. And we haven't had that. And this is a problem that's self-created by the people who we give money to to give us insecure crap. Um, and we're all using the same insecure crap all over the world. So if you follow those those points that Mark made, spot on, I, I would add backing up uh, regularly online and offline to that list. But it's only a list of about five things. If we do those five things really well, well, we avoid 90% of the drama. And that Pareto principle will take us further, but never without this underlying basis, this demand for security and privacy. Yeah. <clears throat> Look, I have worked with thousands of business owners around the world and, and what I know is in small business, we just don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Okay, so we are literally walking into baseball bats 24-7, yeah. some of them are cash flow driven, yeah. some of them are tech driven, some of, the, and some of them are hackers, uh, some of them are uh, uh, health driven, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I think we probably need to more consciously create a forum that is an awareness forum. Yeah. Uh, for small business yeah. around these issues, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I'm going to put it to you two guys that we might um, have a further discussion about that yeah. and how we could just give some sort of regular message out there yeah. to raise the awareness. And and I think accountants and bookkeepers and and particularly the zero community uh, is probably a great yeah, starting no, point for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's a great that's a great idea. Yeah, we definitely we're definitely committed to keeping talking about this, driving some education and. You know, kind of open to the ways, the best ways to do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I feel like I should say thank you at this moment for inviting me and even discussing this subject uh, at this conference. I I have to be honest, I did not expect it. <laughs> So I think it's a really good start, and I think as long as you continue to do that kind of outreach, it's brilliant. Because I think this is way bigger than than the small business world understands. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, particularly, oh, if it's on an iPhone yeah. and it's an app, well, then I'm safe and secure, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, that's going to be 101 business naivety in small yeah. business, and so we've got to think about how we um, change that. You know, it, she'll be right, mate. Sort of yeah, uh, yeah. mindset. Yeah. Okay, because clearly that's just not the future. No. Um, what do you, um, not that we can, uh, co uh, you know, fortune tell, but, but what do you see as perhaps the emerging uh, trends of, of cyber security issues for small business? Where, where might they go? Yeah, well, so I mentioned before that I'm worried about the deep fake uh, market. Um, I think that that's a real issue. So we, you know, we, we tend to trust, we want to trust other people. Um, and if you know what a deep fake is, it's where you kind of see, um, uh, I don't know, uh, Obama ordering a McNugget Happy Meal uh, and it, he never did it, or maybe he did, who knows. But the point is that it looks like he did because it's engineered through AI um, video and audio. Um, and we saw the first case of that, actually a cybersecurity case, where instead of employing email phishing, they basically made a deep fake of the voice of a CEO to ask for a bank transfer. And that just happened earlier this week. So I think we're going to see a lot more sophisticated technology being employed to execute rather silly, simple attacks bank transfers, fund transfers, and I think that for the smart business place, if they don't even know that something like that is possible, um, they may fall victim to such crimes, and that's my concern. Yeah, I think that's a great example. Yeah, and, and um, I think on the other side of that, there's a lot of 
um, investment happening in the security product space to kind of use the same sort of technology to detect that, that kind of thing. Because, um, you know, you imagine a world where you can't tell a real person from a paper, and it's really pretty, pretty scary space to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a um, couple of big trans, uh, transformations in your model uh, to sympathetication and yeah. now and now the community. Yeah. Sing, singular. Um, yeah. Do you mind just sharing a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, um, two factor authentication. So it's um, it's it's a, something we've offered for a while to our customers, but um, it really um, has the adoption has taken off with that ATO mandating it in Australia, and so uh, we went from under a percent to over ninety nine percent adoption. Um, in that space really quickly in, in about 18 months and we've seen a really a really positive impact in that in terms of increased safety for accounts bookkeepers and our small business customers on so that was a really a really significant um, a change and the um, the what we announced at Zericon is this um, zero single sign-on which is a service we're providing to the ecosystem community um, which helps them benefit from the kind of investments we've made in this space for their own applications right because it logging in it seems such a simple thing right just a couple of boxes on a screen but it's actually a lot of a lot of stuff you have to do it to do it securely so um, we can provide it to that ecosystem and kind of raise the bar for everyone in that space uh, which is it's going to be a really positive kind of change. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. The final word. The final word on cyber security. I've got one little uh, uh, example I want to give you. We've got a lot of people in small business, particularly over 40 years of age, yeah. that might think cyber security is for big business. Okay, and therefore it sounds like a big business topic. So again, if we're naive, we're not thinking about that. How real is cyber security as a threat? to small business now today? I mean, I think that's a, it's a great point, right? But it's it's really real. Like, it's a it's a real risk. And it's all about um, something that I think those businesses would understand is about how important tr trust is, right? Like, so, you know, you, you spend a long time over time building up your business. A lot of that is based on word of mouth and trust that, you know, you're going to provide a good service and, mm -hmm. and show good stewardship of the information that you look after for your customers. And if, if through... A, a cyber security kind of means that information's lost or shared, that really undermines the trust which is kind of core to those businesses' business models. So it's a, it's a substantial and a kind of real threat. Not to be too scary about it, but yeah. Um, yeah, um, I, you know, I think that this is absolutely a thing of trust, but it's also a, um, an issue where we have multiple personas. So big companies, even big companies, their Achilles heel is of course their trusted insiders who are employees, who are also fathers and mothers and you know have children who sometimes also get on their iPhone. And I think the real understanding of security is when you can embrace all of the different personas that people would have. So it's not just that you have problems at the employee level or at the you know large business level, you have it at every level. And because of our interconnected society, um, it's not just about you, it's about your supply chain and your role in somebody else's supply chain. And we're, because of that interconnection, I find it uh, a problem that needs to be also solved at a multi-tiered level. There's this great quote, you know, the thinking that got us here isn't the thinking that's going to get us out of here in terms of problem creation and problem solving. So we need different thinking. And we need to kind of embrace this idea that we got to solve this problem at a different level. Fantastic. Um, thank you. The final word from either of you. Uh, one last uh, comment or, or tip for small business owners, accountants, or bookkeepers about cybersecurity. Um, I, I would just go back to the. I mean, I think the the doing those simple, some couple of simple things is really the key to making yourself safe. So, just you know, turning the two-factor authentication on using a strong password. If you, if you can, that's a simple, straightforward thing to do. It actually makes a really big difference. So um, that would be my. Um, maybe uh, also in, in lieu of the last question that you asked, um, to kind of say that you've got to figure out like what are those different personas and communities you belong to and work together. And to use another quote from Benjamin Franklin, um, we have to hang together, otherwise we'll all hang separately. Um, so here it's really about if you don't know what to do, ask people in your sector, uh, talk to your partners, or try to engage as much as possible because as a community you will figure out how to get more secure.
thank you. That's some great tips and Thanks, uh, terrific advice. And uh, let's not be naive in small business yeah. and and hope so it's that we're not going to be a victim because that's just yeah. waiting. It's a time game, then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming on the show today, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Appreciate so. it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah.